afternoon, all you people watching, whether you are or not, <laughs> or later. Uh, I'm Sharon Howard. Every month we do an interview with someone who is important in Hadley. And our important guy today is Tom Quinlan, Jr. Have to say Jr. because <laughs> many of you probably knew his father. Young Hadley boy that he is, just a baby to us at the Senior Center. He's a big man around town because he is our building commissioner. Many of us know that as a building inspector. And I think, Tom, you told me that there's not really a difference between the commissioner label and the inspector label. There is not, no. Okay. <clears throat> we have some guests with us today also, and we're delighted always to have them ask questions, to give input, just to be with us. And we've already been sitting here having a lovely memory chat about Hadley, because the folks who are here are old Hadleyites too, as Tom is. You grew up here, Tom? Yes. Where was your home? On Quinlan Drive. On yeah. Quinlan Drive. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Could it have been named after your family? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was. All right. Building commissioner may be familiar to you all, or it may be something new. So let's have Tom, first of all, describe what a building commissioner does in the town. Okay. Um, what are your duties, lad? All right. <laughs> um, as far as the building part, we review you know plans that permits come in, um, issue the permit, do the inspections and issue a final, a CO for a new home. Uh, What's a CO, Tom? A certificate of occupancy. So you can actually move in. Um, we work with other departments, uh, fire department, doing uh, 110 inspections and 304, which are your apartments, and 304 would be for the liquor licenses, and make sure everything's up to date, fire extinguishers and, uh, you know, hood cleaning and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and also, zoning enforcement officer, which is the, the part that can be a challenge because um, you work with people to make, make things work and uh, enforce the zoning in town. Uh, if you gave a percentage breakdown of those, there's two really big slices to the pie of your jo job. What's your percentage breakdown on those two? It varies all the time, but probably 60-40, 60, 60 with the building and 40 with the zoning. Okay. I guess one of the important questions for me is, when do I need a building permit? When do I need to come to see you? Um, it's nice always to, you know, always recommend calling and seeing, and, and uh, I like that the best because if you're doing a repair that didn't need it, I actually will note it. So if somebody calls with a complaint, you know, my neighbor's doing siding, but they're actually called, said they're only replacing a few pieces, which is a repair that wouldn't need it. Okay. Um, and it's every project's different you know it depends on what they're doing and we try to work with them and determine you know whether it needs it needs it or not is it fair to say then that if you're going to do virtually anything around your home that it is best to check with you to see if permits are needed yes yes and it protects you know not only that making sure it's done properly and all but if you ever go to sell your home it's going to you know be brought up what permits were pulled so if you know you had a new roof as for instance done most likely you're going to check, and if it wasn't permitted, it can you know, hold up a sale and things. Okay. So very important that you be contacted if you're going to do anything. Anybody here use the building inspector? We have several people in the audience. When we built the senior center. Was <laughs> Did they get it right, Tom? Yes. <laughs> yes. Beautiful building. <laughs> well done. Anybody else use, has ever used Tom or his How predecessor? Okay, you work with a lot of agencies in the town. Yes. Can you talk about the interactions and why you would have to go to them, or who do you work with? Okay, I'll use a new home, for example. Um, you know, first, they may need to go to the, the planning board to have the, you know, the lot approved. Okay. Whether it was subdivided or new development. Mm -hmm. um, if there's an issue that they don't meet a setback or a zoning issue they I'd have to refer them to the Zoning Board of Appeals and they'd actually go there for their blessing you know if they allow it yes and um, 
then you're going to have to have a, a septic, which would have to go through the Board of Health. Mm -hmm. um, then we the conservation, so they'll you know check with wetlands any any problems there. Mm -hmm. And we also have the first thing when I task a permit is to the tax collector, make sure that their water and and uh, taxes are up to date. Okay, which is a nice nice thing for the town because it you know they're not going to let me issue the permit until everybody's up to date. And a lot of times it's just people forget. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, and then the fire department is a big one because they're going to review as well as myself the smokes, the COs, and heat detectors. <laughs> so you have a lot of steps to get to building that house, laying in the footings and the foundation. Yes. In there. I guess one of the questions I have about Hadley, too, is septic versus sewer. How does the town break down for, are there a lot of people who need septics in Hadley? I don't actually know the breakdown on that. Um, and there's pros and cons to both. I mean, there is other communities I've worked that there is no sewer. Basically, mm. everything's a septic. Right. Um, but the if you have the septic, it's going to be based in a new home. It's going to be based on the amount of bedrooms you're going to pay an impact fee. Okay. And then, of course, the septic, you're going to have to have the, the perk test and a design. And that is designed on the amount of bedrooms as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um... Let's talk a little bit about how you got here. I asked you when we were talking about this, where you got your skills that you need to be the building commissioner. And you talked some about your father and that business. Would you share with folks? Sure. sure how you I got to be a building commissioner <laughs> in Hadley. I started with my dad, you know, when I could go on a job, probably at 10 years old and, and, uh, <laughs> you know, continued with him and, and basically learn every day. We all learn something every day and uh, um, eventually you, took over the business. And What was your dad's business? What uh, was building. it? Just the yes. building contractor? Building contractor, yes. Okay. Yeah. And then after you finished with your dad and took over the business, you moved on to other things? Moved on to be a, a, you go as a local building inspector and after you take your test, you become a building commissioner. Who do you have to go through? I'm assuming it's a state agency to do all that. Yes, there's some uh, requirements as far as having a construction supervisor's license, you know, in the state, or so many years of education, and you apply to the state to start taking the tests, and they do a quarry check, basically turn in a res resume, and they accept you, and then at that point, you could be a local inspector, mm -hmm. and you have three tests to take, and after the first three you pass you become a conditional commissioner. <laughs> so you actually can work in a town. They give you 18 months. You, uh, you can actually be the commissioner and not have to work under someone. Mm -hmm. And you have 18 months to pass the next three tests when you actually become the, the legal commissioner. Okay. And your steps went from you had your business, it was your father's, and you picked up. And then what was your next step in your own journey to becoming the building commissioner here? Uh, taking over, you know, taking over the business and right, you know, and like then said, you wor working under other people. I worked in East Hampton. Okay, uh, and then I ended up getting and working as a local inspector as well in uh, both part-time jobs in Greenfield, mm -hmm. and um, eventually became the commissioner after my tests in Southampton. In Southampton, how long were you in Southampton? Six years before here. Okay, and then you came here after Southampton, and how long have you been here? It'll be two years in May. May 4th. And the person who was here before you had been here how long? 31 years. So I'll, tell you, to fill. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you that when t uh, Tom and I were talking about his work here, he labeled this his dream job. And like everyone else that I've interviewed, his feelings about his co-workers here in Hadley are just at the top of the scale. You want to say a big thank you or whatever oh, yes. to those? Oh, no, it's a great, everybody works, we work as a team. Um, all the way down from the select board, you know, to my assistants in the office. You know, we all work and everybody's looking out for everybody's back and, and um, all pull together when there is an emergency and it's needed. Okay. Who's on that team? You're on that team. Are other inspectors on that team? I do have alternates, yes. You have alternate? Inspectors, so if I'm away... You know, okay. Or an emergency that I couldn't make that 
that they can okay. be here. They're called, you know, an alternate at that point. Um, I don't have anybody part-time as a local inspector here. Okay. So if I'm building a house, you've got to come and inspect it. Does anybody else have to come and inspect it? Yes, you're going to um, you're gonna have a, uh, there you go, electrical inspector. A plumbing, what? Electrical inspector. Electrical. Plumbing inspector, yes. Okay. Which do work kind of with me as well. And um, you're going to have the fire chief come out for smoke seals with myself as well and sign off. Mm-hmm. Is there a plumbing inspector, yes, did plumbing you say? Yes, plumbing inspector, yes. A plumbing inspector. Is that all? Plumbing, electrical, cool. fire chief, you? Yeah, and Board of Health is going to inspect if there is a... Um, Septic. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then we'll have highway if it is the water line, mm -hmm. as well as the, um, which I had forgotten, the highway does sign off as well on the driveway permit. A plot plan would have to be turned in and signed in, but the water sewer hookup they're going to oversee and inspect as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tell us a little bit about your personal life. I tease and tell him he's just a kid, <laughs> but this kid has a couple of kid sons, I know. <laughs> tell us about that. I have uh, two boys that both grew up in Hadley as well, mm -hmm. uh, 27 and 24, Thomas and Connor. So there is a third. <laughs> <laughs> have you lost him? <laughs> no, don't know where he is. Okay, and do you live in Hadley now? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Given all that Tom has said, would you like to know anything about the work he does or about him that he's brought up or we've started talking about here? I have a question. I should probably know this information, but what all do you do with, with commercial? Thank you. There's a lot of commercial. Yes. Yeah, that's that's one thing. So Hadley has a little over five thousand people. Southampton has six over six thousand, and there's three times the work at least in in Hadley, and mainly because of the well, it is because of the commercial. Mm -hmm. And um, you don't have any help with that. I'm sorry? You don't have any help with that. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> and he's still smiling. And he's still smiling. And it's still his dream job. <laughs> Thanks, Linda. Yes. No, I find the busier it is, the, the more productive I am. I, it's kind of how I've always been. Mm -hmm. The more projects when I was out building, you know, going, the more productive. And I don't need a lot of sleep. <laughs> Go ahead, Linda. Are there challenges with the commercial that you don't have with the residential? Are there any, any special problems? Um, it's 50-50. It's I wanted to talk a little bit about his uh, enforcement part of his job, too. Can you give us an example that doesn't show any secrets that we shouldn't know, but an example of what that might look like for your work? Sure. A, a simple one, a neighbor calls that the fence was put on their property. And um, I, you know, legally I can't go out there, and I'm not a surveyor unless those stakes are in there, and Mm. done by a professional surveyor say that it is or not but part of the job is to go out you know talk to both the neighbors of butters and, and just say that you know let's work this out you know oh. do you one of you want to do you know have it pinned or split it pin it and because uh, it's going to become civil mm -hmm. you know a after that point the town isn't really going to get involved and they're going to have to fight each other and nobody's going to be 100 percent happy at the end and so you mediate basically basically at mediate that point Mm -hmm. I have a question about fences. When you put a fence on a piece of property, the good side of the fence, is that supposed to be facing your neighbor and the other part facing you? Let not me read. Not in Hadley. Not in Hadley. Let me let folks know what Rita said because you're soft spoken, darling. <laughs> oh, that's the first. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It was. <laughs> she asked if in Hadley, when you put up a fence, the better side of the fence needs to be facing there's, there's your a, neighbor. There's a right side and a wrong side to the fence. Yes. And you want to know whether the good side, the, the right side should, the right be, facing side should be facing your neighbor. Yeah. And Tom said, I'm sorry, what did Tom say? Our bylaw says it either way. Oh, you can. You wow. can. And and you can also be, you know, not on their other person's property, but up to theirs. Okay. Really? And when they, yes. And when they do call, we always recommend, you know, leaving some for maintenance so you can take right. care of your own okay. property. But, um, Oh. Our, side, our fence is actually pretty lenient from other communities I've worked yeah. in because the, the good side is a tricky one when, when it is in the bylaw. I always look at that when I am going through a, uh, a neighborhood. I look at when I see a fence. I always look to see, well, who built that fence? Was it this guy or this guy? Mm -hmm. 
I do the same thing, Rita. Yeah. I didn't realize it was dependent on the town. I didn't either. I yes. thought it was. I thought it was just standard. And I also thought it was good neighborly. Yes. Well, <laughs> it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Well, that's what I think a lot of people do. You know, they respect each other. Hadley's a small town, and we. Yeah. Great community, so they do. They respect each other, and they they do it even though it's not in there. Okay. Anybody else have something come up? Well, I think. Tom could talk about his involvement with the people who have been relocated because of the water leak. Thank you, Jane. We have oh, had a major yes. breakdown over at the Vesta Apartments. Better and known as Winfield. And sorry? Better known as Winfield. Better that known is. as Winfield. You're right, Rita. And uh, Tom has been involved in that. Can you take us through? You get a call at, you're up at 2 or 3 in the morning sometimes. Yeah, we were actually, calls. I think the call was 12 30, 1 o'clock. Okay. We were there till about 5.30, um, but the whole team got together, volunteer fire department. We um, actually, the chief, there was no mate, there was no um, representative for maintenance or people from there that mm -hmm. showed up so, soon enough. So he literally went and got the hotel rooms. Cause we knew, you know, evaluate this, the way the uh, building was and there was no way they could stay there. There was yes. nobody safe, life safety wise that could stay. So we had to get all of them put up. I think there was... 38 out of the 40 units. Wow. And um, ended up calling. We didn't need the, the plumbing inspector, but the electrical inspector was right out, you know, to look at the damage where the was coming through lighting and all that. But it's water pipe. It's sprinkler system. Why not the plumbing inspector? Well, they, we knew where the break was. Okay. And, and he is called out a lot, but this time he know, Dennis didn't, he took, didn't come out. Um, and he stayed as well. Uh, Paul Miller stayed till whatever it was, 5, 530 in the morning. Um, what really impressed me was, um, and we helped, you know, get their bags together, carry the animals out and all, but the, our volunteers, the young, young group we had driving the vehicles and bringing them back and forth to the um, hotels and all, it was a... Where'd you get those, Tom? Where'd the volunteers come from at that hour of the morning? The, the fire department volunteers. Oh, it was the fire department. And so they were busy transporting people and goods. Yes, yep. Wow. And I mean, uh, I think a couple of them are 18 years old. I mean, they were great, 18 <laughs> to 20, and, and um, just the way they handled it. I mean, yes. the people were, you know, they were not at their best because they were great, don't get me wrong, but, you know, they wanted to stay home. They wanted to stay well, in their course. apartment. Of course, yeah. And um, they've actually moved in pretty quick there. The Hopefully tomorrow at 1 o'clock they're going to have it so that some of them get back in their apartments. Hmm. So you'll begin the... We've been yeah. almost been daily. Several weeks, hasn't it? Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> and what has, what's just been your role in all that after that night? Tom? So we've met, you know, to push them along, see what the problem is so it doesn't happen again, because it did happen in a second building. Who's them? The owners. The owners. So is that Conover? Are they the owners? Yes. Okay. Yes. No, they're the managers. They're the they're managers. The managers. They're representing okay. the owners. Yes. Okay. So and, you've um, been working with them to move it along. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and uh, including the electrical inspector, we've all been there to, to push them and make sure, you know, that this is go as quickly as it can, mm -hmm. and make sure nothing's held up as far as the permit, anything. Okay. And um, they've really been been moving pretty quickly, and, and it's okay. not easy for them to find the help. Given the scope of the job, imagine. Oh God, that's removing sheetrock and insulation and wet carpets and everything that they had dumpster after dumpster full mm -hmm. of stuff yes and they did it fast they did it fast it was amazing i mean people say well how come it's taking this long it's a huge oh. undertaking we're not talking about one room in a small house we're yeah. talking about they had six or eight vans there constantly working right and the number of uh, dumpster bags yeah. that were oh. put out along the sidewalk oh, it's just yes. phenomenal yeah. Would you give them a grade on how well they've done, and or how well you all have actually they done? They get a hundred. They get a hundred. <laughs> no, everybody's it's like said it's worked very well. The town of Hadley did well. yeah. very well. done very well. Look how the senior center stepped up. I mean, anything anybody needs, and they're helping them That's great. get through it the best they can because it's not. It's not easy. It's not easy not being at home. It's no. not easy being displaced when you're old and have set ways. Yes. And the damaged water goes, oh my God. And nobody's happy about it, but you know, I have a friend who always puts on emails, you cannot control the wind, but you can adjust the sails. 
And I think that's a wonderful (laughs) attitude to have. And so the wind blew a bad one, but 100% in terms of response. Nice job, Tom. Thank you. (laughs) Anything else you all would like to know from Tom? Cynthia. I have a question. Sure. Maybe two. Um, Going back to the uh, building permit, my understanding was that it's outside work that you have to get a permit for. Do you have to get a permit for inside work? Yes. Yeah, basically once you're, you know, drywall requires a permit. So once you're opening up a wall, you you know, it would require a permit. Like renovating a bathroom? Renovating a bathroom. You're going to be opening the wall up to, you know, redo the piping. So it would require a building, electrical, and a, a plumbing permit. Okay, because that was entirely clear. Yeah. And sewer versus septic, there is parts of town where there is not availability of sewer, so you don't really have a choice. Right? Correct. It sounded like you had a choice, but you don't. No, you don't. No. <laughs> if it's there, you, you do have to hook up to it. And either you or your father put the roof on my house about 22 years ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we did it together then. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So so far, it's lasted pretty fine. Yeah. 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 Yeah
things that are going on in town with the hope of helping the residents solve the problems instead of having them do something and then find out they did the wrong thing. And have to tear it down? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Assessor. I had forgotten the assessor. Dan's on there yes. as well. And <laughs> a lot of times there's not a lot he has said, but when he does, we, we get a nice, correct answer from him on. Right. Jane gives one example of putting a porch over a wetland. Is there a big issue that's been an ongoing issue that you'd share with folks here that, uh, as you said, there's some that go on over a period of time? Yeah, the one challenge that I knew I was going to have because I was told before I even applied for the position was the campers on the river. Ah, uh, the campers on yeah. the river. Because the prior, um, you know, the bylaw that the planning board has changed, the prior was allowed one per parcel, and it had to go through zoning board of appeals, and it just, I guess, never was enforced over the years. And I was told by, you know, quite a few boards and and people that they wanted that enforced. And they were going to make sure whoever took the position was going to start. So we, we did put the committee together and the, the planning board came up with a new bylaw and we've come up with a permitting process for it. And yes. we knew it would be changed a lot, but it's, um, you know, it's been some questions we've been dealing with council on it mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. get it all straightened out. But it looks like, you know, one of the big challenges was, I don't want to say it, make sure I say it properly, but the <laughs> bylaw says the, trouble here. Yeah, the, the um, <laughs> Camper, I should say not camp. The RV okay. has to meet the setbacks of a, a principal structure in that zone. Okay. So the challenge, people say, well, it's an RV. I could drive my truck and park it on the property line. Mm -hmm. But it was written, and town council has confirmed that it does have to meet those setbacks. Okay. And Good. Um, so basically, the applicant has to go through the conservation first because mm -hmm. that's the big thing for the, the wetlands, and then they apply for the permit and board of health. For sanitation looks at it, the uh, gas and fire pits, any of that would be, um, Mike looks at it, the mm -hmm. fire chief, and then myself. Mm -hmm. And we, Mike and I try to go out and do a site visit before we, you know, when we hand them the permit. Because at that point, they've got the drawings, they've shown us everything's good, but we go out and try to be personable with it and hand it, you know, the permit. Mm -hmm. um, and we did have a few come in recently, but there's no campers, so we have to, you know, we're not going to you know, give them the permit till the spring, we can go out and see the the site. You can go out and see it. But there's a lot of the sites that aren't going to have the 18 uh, on them that they've yeah. had because there's setbacks between campers as well. Good. Okay. Any more questions or responses there? Anybody has? Great job. Thank you. Tom, I thank you. Thank for you for having me. Being here. It's just great. And I understand that his job is so complex. Um, he and I had a nice chat a couple days ago just to get ready for this. And I frankly was overwhelmed by the plethora of his duties and the number of people with whom he interacts. And as I feel about everybody that I've interviewed, you guys are lucky and Hadley to have the people you have. So Tom Quinlan Jr., thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, everybody. For